Hey everybody, welcome back. It's time for another Featured Friday here at Let's Go Geo. And as usual, I have something interesting to show you. Today, this is our interesting feature. So here's what we're looking at here. We've got this swirling pattern going on here. And your challenge is, what is this? What could possibly make this? Is this natural, man-made? Is it a rock, a fossil, a mineral? How did it get like this? What could possibly cause this swirling pattern here? That's pretty cool. It's like an art. There are places actually where these types of swirls are considered artistic forms, even landscape size that I've heard of. So we have swirls and whirls. What is going on here? So that's your challenge today is to try to figure that out, take your guess, throw it in the comments, um, do it as quick as you can because soon I will actually tell you what's going on here. So let's just take a look at it. So what you want to try to do is identify, again, so we have a swirling pattern, but what is this? What do we have here? It's, uh, is this actually rock? <clears throat> Am I trying to trick you? Sometimes I trick you guys, not always. Is this actually rock? It's not man-made, is it? Did, it? did somebody make this? Is this like some sort of art project? Or what is this? And what's, what's with the difference in coloration there? That's pretty interesting. Okay. So <clears throat> I can tell you, I'll at least tell you, this is from an actual rock. It's not a man-made art project. This is actually made by nature, actually made by geology. So... We have a real feature from the natural world here. So we can get some pretty cool features as you guys have seen here. Minerals take amazing shapes. So we can have swirls and whirls and branching patterns and you know, things that are pretty amazing that do look like works of art, like those dendrite patterns we've seen. So everything from dendrite branching to whirls and then those splays of those crystals like malachite. So a lot of cool things can happen when it comes to minerals and and stuff so what do you think we have going on how did this get like this what forces created a whirl pattern so your next hint that i can tell you is this is actually paleontological so what we have here is something going it is related to life in some way so that's a big hint here and i can tell you that this is pretty old stuff uh somewhat degraded uh material it's been through a lot there were some some faults and folding nearby Hopefully you can recognize this type of rock too. Focus on what you see there. If you found this, would you know what kind of rock that is? So you should be thinking along the lines of a limestone. And that tells us that this was likely some sort of marine environment possibly. We have a marine limestone. So now we're really getting into the hint. So hopefully you've already dropped your guess down in the comments and now let's, let's jump into this swirling pattern. So. This is, like I said, it's a limestone. In this case, this is Paleozoic aged. Uh, I collected this recently when we actually did a, a video uh, not long ago where I talked about some Paleozoic stuff. So if you watch that video, you might already have a bit of a hint. So uh, this, is, this is actually a feature created from a living organism. In a Paleozoic, very long ago, we're talking hundreds of millions of years ago, a Paleozoic seaway. So this was a marine creature. But what kind of creature makes a swirly pattern? I've never seen, do we have a creature that makes a swirly pattern like that? Well, again, think marine creatures. So when we get these types of fossils, especially stuff that gets pretty old, it can have a pretty degraded look. So there's processes that happen, like there's right at the time when the thing gets preserved, and then there's secondary processes, things that happen to this over time, and so it might not have that great original look. So you have to kind of do a little investigation here. And But when you see whirly patterns, one thing to immediately start thinking about are things called marine snails. They're actually referred to as gastropods. So what we have going on here is the remnant of a gastropod. You will see some whirling types of patterns and ammonites as well. Those are cephalopods. But in this case, we have the remnants of a marine snail or gastropod 
And what we're seeing is one, we're seeing this whirl, right? So when you think, think about being on a beach and you find seashells, you can find different types, right? Sometimes you'll find one that's like this and it's, well, some of them are more flat. Some of them are kind of a, a hump, right? And you have two that go together. Those are called bivalves. That's a type. Um, but some will actually be like kind of swirly patterns and those would be from marine snails. And then there's elongation, right? So think about a whirling pattern and then elongate that. And that's when you have more like a cone, a seashell that's kind of more like a cone. That's uh, that's a whirl that's just like an extent, an elongated series of whirls, right? So think of it like a spiral staircase and it just keeps whirling. So we can get some pretty cool features is the point when it comes to gastropods. And it all is about the whirl. You can have multiple whirls. You can have more separated, elongated or more flattened ones. All of these features are what paleontologists use to actually get to know their marine snails and classify them into different species or genera or, you know, group them together so they understand what happened. So this is a marine snail from the Ordovician. So this is really old. And it is, like I said, that this material is uh, not perfectly preserved. But preservation doesn't always perfectly preserve stuff. Sometimes... Uh, we get different features of the original organism. So a, a big thing we get with lots of different types of fossils are the concepts of molds and casts. Easiest way to think of mold versus cast is just think of like a thumbprint cookie. If you put your thumbprint in it, that is that will be your mold, right? So, and if you fill that, then that impression in with something, that's your cast. So the cast is gonna have a bit of more of a 3D look to it. Uh, whereas the mold is going to be, you know, like you would make a mold and then you would use that to create a cast. So if a dinosaur puts his foot into the ground and leaves that, then he has left a mold. And if that later gets filled in with some kind of material and we have preserved something that's a little bit more 3D like this, then we have the the cast. Okay, so that's kind of the difference. So that's a big thing that happens with these various types of fossils. And the marine fossils are cool because, <clears throat> or anything with a cavity, can then get filled in with say like marine mud um, and then we can get uh, other we can get secondary replacements of those minerals and they can be crystallized so I've seen some beautiful crystalline reef deposits ancient reef deposits that that crystallize and just they're really cool looking um, but they the voids are what gets filled in and and just basically lined with crystals um, in this case we're just kind of looking at mostly a limestone like material lime mud um, and basically the filling in of that impression left by that snail. So that's what we have here today. And like I said, it's an Ordovician marine snail fossil. And it, that was a time when there was a lot of interesting diversification going on with gastropods. So really cool time to study these and, uh, you know, question what was going on in their environment at the time. But We'll have a lot more uh, fossils. I've got plenty in the collection and plenty that we'll go out and find in the field and I'll take you along on those journeys. But I thought today we would just take a stab at why there are whirls in the rock record, we'll call it. All right, I will see you guys on the next adventure here at Let's Go Geo. If you are interested in trying your hand at more Featured Friday challenges, check the Featured Friday playlist here at Let's Go Geo. Otherwise, see you on the next adventure.